Well, it was probably the, the regular revenue. So I think at the point of leaving, leaving university, I th Jim Sharp must have been doing about. So is university worth it? I went to university at a university called Aston. Aston is in central Birmingham. Originally, I signed up for the course International Business and Management. The reason I signed up for that was because the placement year was abroad. But then as things sort of started moving on with Gymshark, in the second year I swapped to business and management, which meant I could do my placement locally. And then I ended up moving out of the course altogether and dropping out in the second year. But why did I go to university? It, yeah, I, I went to university because it, I didn't know what I wanted to do, to be completely honest. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't want to have to make a big decision at such an early age. And I wanted to just uh, find out what I enjoyed. At that point, I was just absolutely passionate about the gym. I was passionate about IT development, um, website development, app development. And university gave me that opportunity to, I guess it pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, it meant that I was meeting you know, lots of different people from around the country and around the world. And it gave me a little bit more time. Did I ever go for the social aspect? No, not really, if I'm honest. Um, I was introverted, shy. That was never anything that was particularly exciting to me. Um, that did exist. I mean, I didn't live in at university. I stayed at home because I was local to the university anyway, so I commuted in. So no, I didn't go for the social aspect, although I met lots of really, really cool people, uh, some of which I'm still in touch with to this day. What did a young man apprentice when a student loan on? Ah, I know what it was. So this was before Gymshark, I think. So I think I'm, that was it. So I spent my student loan on like number plates and things like that. So I was buying car registrations and selling them on. It was like number plates. Um, there was like the Apple developer license. I can't remember what they called it, which was fairly cheap. Um, it was things like that. I, I think probably ended up funding the sewing machine from it as well. So when did I realize that it wasn't working for me? Listen, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I like, like I loved university. I wasn't doing backflips going in, but I was aware of the fact that it was, it was good for me. And my, my life was split, split into basically three distinct areas. It was university, which I would do in the day. I would work at pizza of the evening, and then it will, it'll be like different business ventures of which Jim Sharp was one on the evenings. I, I don't know, I guess I'm obviously much, and I think this is the case for anyone, my dream was to pursue different, like Gymshark. My, that was my dream, but I couldn't afford to. And also I needed that sort of safety net that I felt at the time, like university was providing me with that. I definitely think as we, as we moved into second year, because Gymshark started to pick up at this point, that was probably the point where I was thinking, you know, I could, I could leave university at this point and pursue something that was meaningful and genuinely had the opportunity to succeed. And it wasn't until that sort of tipping point where it was a case of do a shift at Pizza Hut, go and do a university exam, or go to the first day of the Body Power Expo, where I was sort of forced to make that decision. But if I'm honest, I really wanted to sort of like try and hold on to Pizza Hut and university for that matter as long as I possibly could. I didn't want to just sort of like drop everything for Gymshark until I really had to. Like I said, university as well, it just gave me the opportunity to continue to learn. And then Pizza Hut gave me the opportunity to earn money. So it meant that I could and really allow Gymshark to prosper without having to, you know, having to fund my lifestyle or, or anything else. So, um, yeah, it was, it was through second year, sort of end of first year, early second year, I think was the point where I thought, you know what, I don't think I'm going to finish this course. So, what was it about Gymshark that gave you the confidence to, to make it all Um Well, it was only the, the regular revenue. So I think at the point of leaving, leaving university, Gymshark must have been doing about a quarter of a million in revenue. So Gymshark was doing a quarter of a million in revenue and I was still working at Pizza Hut and I was still at university. And I think that's important. And even though I didn't take a salary at that point, it was clear to me that if I wanted to, I could. Now that's not to say I could for a prolonged period of time, but it gave me the opportunity or it gave me the, the confidence that the business could support and I had little to no cost at all but the business could support me. So still lived at home, still worked at Pizza, still was at university and Gymshark was doing a quarter of a million in revenue. What was that like? Did you speak to many people at like you? Uh, not really. I didn't really tell too many people to be honest. No, it wasn't like you sort of keep it to yourself. And I think, yeah, I mean, I was at university, Lewis was at university. We, we just got our heads down and just worked through it, to be honest. It was all about the business and it wasn't about ourselves. We genuinely loved the business and we were well aware of the fact that we had to reinvest constantly in the business. So it's, it's all well and good having that revenue number, but you have to reinvest every single penny just to give yourself a shot 
at continued growth. So yeah, the numbers were big, but well, one in the grand scheme of things compared to much larger businesses, they weren't. And we had to reinvest every penny of that just to give ourselves a shot. So if, so if Gymshark wasn't a thing, I would, have stuck, I would have stuck to the university course. Now that's not to say I wouldn't have been doing other things on the, on the side because my ambition and my dream was to be able to do something like this, particularly in fitness and online. So if it wasn't Gymshark, I'd like to think it would have been something else, but I wouldn't have left at that point. I wouldn't have given it up for um, just to go off and pursue something that didn't exist at the time. I wanted to see something tangible. Uh, I wanted to be really sensible in my decisions. So university helped me in two areas, right? So it helped me from an academic perspective because it exposed me to parts of business that I wouldn't have ordinarily been exposed to. At Aston, the university I went to, they have a common, or they had a common first year. So everyone in the whole business school or everyone that's studying business does the same first year. That meant for me, who was doing business management, even though I was happy to do certain business topics and tech development computing topics, I wasn't particularly excited to do the accountancy, finance, operations, legal side of things. But because of the common first year, I had to. And that actually really helped because it exposed me to parts or to subjects that I wouldn't have exposed myself to at that age voluntarily. And funnily enough, those early legal lessons, just having a basic understanding of things like intellectual property, actually really helped me 12 months later when I'm kicking off Gymshark and need to protect us from an intellectual property perspective. That's not to say that I knew everything about it and I was a genius in that area because I definitely wasn't. But just having that basic understanding really, really helped. And then separately, it helped me from a social perspective because I was pushed out of my comfort zone into a university with a lot of people, I, well, pretty much everyone I'd never met before. And just, just that little push outside of my comfort zone really helped. I think there's so much that you can learn. And I, I, I'm a massive advocate for lifelong, lifelong learning, however you do that, whether it's through reading books, meeting people, listening to podcasts, or going off and doing a, a course at university. Just choose the medium that works best for you. Uh, and I think, I genuinely think that, you know, you can learn so much from universities. Whilst it wasn't, it didn't like make sense for me at the time. And you see a lot of these things, don't you, online where you see like this person dropped out and went and did really cool things. But also there's a lot of people that didn't drop out and also did really cool things as well. So I think you can learn a hell of a lot from university. As an employer, do you look for that? Oh, like, not really, no. Like, no. Like, oh, I, no, I don't. No, we, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't look at a CV and look at university personally, no, I wouldn't. That's not to say that other people wouldn't, but no, I, I, I wouldn't, no. I would look at past experiences, and it really depends as well on, like obviously if you're a lawyer, then you have to have a, a certain level of, you know, of skill and certain things that you have to have right to do that. So I, from that point of view, I completely get it. But in a creative role or in many management roles, I wouldn't personally be looking at university. You'd more just want to make sure that an individual is competent and strong in what they do. And if I'm honest, one of the things that is really important to me, specifically in creative areas, is I want to see that people have pursued, you know, creative projects outside of their work life, because then it makes you realize that this person is genuinely passionate about that. I think that really helps. My advice to others who may be thinking about dropping out of university. Um, I think I would say think really carefully about why you're there first and foremost, because the opportunities from university are vast, both from an academic point of view, but from a social point of view as well. I wouldn't just jump out of university if you don't have anything. So even if you want to start a business and you want to create something really cool, I don't like not doing it because you're at university for me is just an excuse. Like you should be able to do this on your evenings and weekends. I don't think you need to like jump out of university to start a business. I think you can build something that works and then leave if that is something that you want to do. I think as well, just be again, really thoughtful about why you're there and what you want out of it, because it's, it is a bit of a free pass in the sense that like you can just spend a period of time being selfish, concentrating on yourself and learning and gaining knowledge. And that I think is really, really powerful. So I think just, Think really carefully about what you're doing and why. Don't be led on by the minority that have left university and done incredible things. That's not to say that you won't be able to do that. I'm sure that you will. But equally, I think, just be thoughtful about the opportunity that you have. There are so many people that would give so much to be in your position. So I think, just, just think about that. And then if you do have something, you have a brilliant idea or you have a business or you have an opportunity elsewhere that is tangible and makes sense, then at that point, I think that's when you can seriously consider making the leap.
So over a year ago, it was during COVID, I had an email from, from Aston that basically said they wanted to give me an honor, honorary degree. Obviously I was absolutely buzzing, so I, was, I'm gonna be, I thought I'm gonna be the first person in my family to have a degree. Then as time went on, I re well, they then mentioned to me that it was gonna be an honorary doctorate, which is out of this world. I could not believe it. I was super emotional. I called my mom and dad straight away and I was telling them about it. To not only be the first person in the family to go to university, but also to get doctorate and to be the first do doctor in the family is crazy as well. So it was a really special moment for me. And then that happened about a year or so ago. And then, you know, the organization happens and it gets closer and closer. I sort of didn't think too much of it because I was so busy with work. And then when it came around, it was a, an incredible day and it was a super emotional day. I, yeah, I genuinely just couldn't believe it. And I was so proud, so, so proud of the fact that I'd been awarded that and that they'd thought about me, especially that, you know, they'd given it me or they'd awarded it me now at the age that I'm at at 29. It was, um, it was emotional, it was overwhelming. And it was all around just an, an incredible day. So I was so, so proud that Aston awarded it me. To see everyone else that was being awarded their degrees as well was a special moment. I did a speech. I was still thinking about what I was going to say in that speech and writing the notes down on my phone as I was walking on. So I think that Aston people were a little bit nervous as to where, where I was going to go with this and probably why I was so unprepared. But work's been crazy the last few weeks. But yeah, it, it was just a really, really special day and a day that I never thought would happen but I was so proud. So today is the day I become a doctor. Really, really excited. It's a, it's a special day today. Benjamin Francis, on behalf of the university, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Business Administration Honoris Causa.